the United States, it seems that we're consumed by what we eat. Too little, too much. And more and more, it seems that the disordered way in which we think about food is trickling down to our children. Or is it? This morning, Harvard psychologist Dr. Sharon Churvin joins us to sort out whether food is really the issue when it comes to kids and eating disorder. Thanks for joining me this morning. First of all, that a lot of times is the question. Is this an issue over what my child will or won't put in their mouth, or is this something else? What have you found? What I've found that is children are consumed with whether or not they're eating too much or too, too little. It's like we haven't been able to find the balance point. Mm -hmm. The obesity numbers are on the rise, so 32% of children are considered overweight. And then there are growing numbers of children between the ages of 8 and 12 showing symptoms of a restrictive eating disorder. You know, what's interesting is I was just reading an article today about a, a teenager who, was, who had undergone the gastric bypass surgery, and that is unprecedented. I mean, is that the level of uh, an epidemic that we're seeing in the United States? Definitely. It's concerning, and that surgical interventions are even being used for young children is a message that there's no other way to manage weight other than um, aggressive measures. Here's the question though, a lot of times, you know, you have kids who are a little roly-poly, but there's an extra la layer of fat that they kind of need because then they're going to shoot up mm -hmm. to, to be six feet tall or what have you. How do you know whether something is an eating disorder or whether it's just the natural cycle of how kids are before they grow up into their adult bodies? I think that we've almost lost our inner, like our intuitive sense of what's healthy. And so there's over concern and over parenting. I've heard from many parents, I'm worried my daughter's going to have an eating disorder and she's two, just because that would seem like one of the worst things that could happen to their child. And then on the other hand, there seems to be looking the other way when there's a child just sort of increasing body mass with sugary drinks and snacks after school. And there seems to be a lack of awareness of what might help that child stay in the middle. But it, it seems like there's a common theme here, and that's that parents are thinking about their child's weight, whether it's too low or too high, through the lens in which they maybe see themselves. I mean, is that part of the influence here? I think it's definitely an influence, and that's what makes this a very hard thing to talk about. The adults who are possibly overly self-preoccupied around their own body image have to somehow mute that when they're both talking to their children as well as the way they might see their child's body mass. Another adult who may be in that overweight category may be as well struggling to find yeah. the tools to give that child an opportunity to have a different experience than they have. So when it comes to treating eating disorders, especially among children, I would imagine that the family is really integrated as part of the process. It's probably the biggest resource a child has, say, under the age of 14 mm. to make a healthy life adaptation. The experts and the resources outside of the family can only educate, but what happens behind um, closed doors is really where the child learns how to be balanced. Is there a chance to cure these kids? Is there hope for these absolutely. kids? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I think uh, motivated families, um, great providers, um, sort of rolling up their sleeves and tackling the issue early. Mm -hmm. That's where we see great outcomes. Uh, but it means taking it on directly and, um, and intervening. And what do you find is the crux of the issue? Is it often an emotional or mental concern as opposed to just the issue of food? Are there extenuating circumstances a lot of times? I'd say, um, given that I'm a psychologist, I tend to think that things are more emotionally driven mm -hmm. or self-esteem driven. It's how we feel about ourselves. Um, we've moved away from blaming mothers for anorexia. We've moved away from just seeing this as a control issue mm -hmm. or a lack of control issue in an in a overeating situation. Uh, there tends to be lots of emotion that's getting regulated by either over control or under control. And so if we can help both adapt a new eating strategy and new coping skills to manage emotion, you often see recovery uh, that's, that's 
uh, long term. Well, I appreciate having you here because I know we're getting into National Eating, uh, Eating Disorder Awareness Week. And yes. as a matter of fact, as part of that, we want to let you know that on Monday, we're actually going to have some parenting experts here. We're going to share some books that are directed at children who maybe suffer from eating disorders. So that will be coming up next week.